Hi everyone, Barb Alvarez here, your Church by the Sea resident yogi, and today we're going to do yoga for an achy back. Now, our backs might ache for many reasons. We might have the wrong mattress. Maybe we're binge-watching Netflix in a mushy couch. Or maybe we're sitting for way too long in front of the computer, hunched shoulders with the wrong posture and the wrong setup. Whatever it is, yoga is always a great alternative for back pain. So let's get started. We're gonna start on our backs. And we're gonna hug our knees into our body. Bring your right knee into your right hand and your left knee in your left hand and just gently rock from side to side. Giving your sacrum and your lower back a massage. If it feels comfortable to do it, go ahead and come to a happy baby pose, grabbing your big toes with your middle and index fingers and your thumb, making a carabiner with your fingers and rock side to side. It targets a slightly different area than just a regular hands and the knees rocking side to side. If it feels good to do it and it doesn't hurt, let's rock back and forth. If it hurts, don't do it. Anything that hurts in the wrong way, stay out of that. So I'll come up sitting crisscross in easy pose and I'll remove the flesh from my sit bones. This pose is called Sukhasana. And let's go ahead and start ocean breath, Ujjayi breath. Slightly constricting the back of the throat. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. The movement follows the breath. So inhale. And on the exhale, leading with the heart, fold forward and ground the sit bones. So the sit bones want to come up. Don't let them keep grounding the sit bones. And fold and reach with your fingertips. Take a few breaths here. Inhale and let's move to the right. Start to walk the hands over to the right. The shoulders are parallel to the floor. That notch in your collarbone is in line with your knee, if it's possible for you. If not, do the best you can. Keeping the sit bones grounded, they want to come up. Take an inhale. Let's come back to center and up. Release the legs, shake them out. And now we're going to cross again, but this time we're going to bring the opposite leg in front. So whatever you were doing before, bring the opposite leg in front. Remove the flesh from the sit bones. Inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Take a few breaths here. another one and on the exhale walk the hands over this time they're going left and the notch in my collarbone is in alignment with my left knee as best as I can get it in alignment mine isn't quite there the shoulders are parallel to the earth so one shoulder should not be higher than the other it wants to do that don't let it bring it down Drop the head, take another inhale, come back to center, and on the exhale, come up. Bring your hands on your lap, but first remove the flesh from your sit bones again, and bring your hands right over your knees, and let's go ahead and start to rotate the spine one way, and then let's go the other way.
Whatever you do on one side of the body, do the same thing on the other side of the body. Take an inhale and exhale here. Inhale, open the heart to the sky. Pretend that your shoulder blades are meeting behind your back and on the exhale, round and arch your back and hug the belly button in and drop your nose toward your belly button. Let's go one more time, inhale. Open and exhale. And last time, inhale. And exhale. And then come back to center. I'm feeling better already. Let's go ahead and come up to all fours. The hands are right underneath the shoulders. And the knees are right underneath the hips. And we're in on all fours. And let's inhale, lift the crown of the head and the sit bones to the sky, dropping the belly button toward the earth, shoulders away from the ears, and exhale, round the back, drop the tailbone toward the earth, the crown of the head toward the earth. This is cat pose. And then inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. And then exhale, cat. Inhale, back to center. Let's go ahead and lift the knees up off the mat. Curl the toes under and come to a downward facing dog and walk that dog out. Dog is one of my very favorite poses because it just feels so good. It feels so good. Usually when I first come into it, my the backs of my legs are very tight. But I'm slowly bicycling my legs out, bending one knee, straightening the other, bending and straightening, and that's creating space in the backs of my legs. The hands are shoulder width apart. The feet are hip width apart. Bend the knees and send the heart toward your knees. Hug the elbows in, hug the armpits in. Look at your belly button with your eyes. All four corners of your hands are pressing into the mat with equal force. Straighten your knees. Try not to move your upper body from its current position. If you're very tight in your back body, this pose, pose might look a little bit more like this. And that's okay. I'm not so concerned with how it looks as I am with how it feels. I'm going to go ahead and bring my knees back down to the mat and get on my belly. And scooch up so you can see me. My hands are right, my fingers in line with the shoulders and on the inhale I'm going to come up to a cobra pose. Heart pushes out and forward. My shoulders are away from my ears. My eyes are looking up but the back of my neck is nice and long. And release. I'm going to try it again. Inhale up. This time maybe I want to straighten my elbows a little bit more. Squeeze my bottom. Squeeze my bottom to protect my lower back. And release. When I take a break here in between or between poses, I might want to turn my head to the right. And if I do that, Next time, turn it the other way, because whatever we do on one side of the body, we do it on the other. Inhale, up. At least three breaths in each pose and come back down. And this time I'm turning my head this way. 
Even though you cannot see me or my eyes, I'm going to do that for the benefit of my spine and of maintaining balance. Next, let's do child's pose. So I'm bringing my big toes together behind my back, side by side, not overlapping, side by side. And I'm opening my knees a little bit wider than my hips to make room for my body. And I'm coming with my forehead right here. This is called child pose. On the inhale, I'm coming forward or up with my hands. And on the exhale, I'm gonna walk my hands over to the right. Again, my shoulders are parallel to the earth. And I'm sending my sit bones back, opening the whole side body, giving space for the blood to flow. I'm going the opposite way now. Three breaths at least in each pose. And then back to center. I'm coming back to all fours now. And downward facing dog. And now one of my favorite poses that's great for sciatica or any other hip issues or lower back. Pigeon pose. So I'm going to lift my right leg to the sky. And on the exhale, I'll bring it through. My right knee is behind my right wrist. And I'm going to drop back. If it's too much pressure on your knee, lessen the angle. You can increase the angle for more opening or bring that foot back and decrease the angle and then just drop into pigeon pose. The hips here are also parallel to the floor. Take at least three breaths, and I would, I would recommend five. This pose is, feels so good. And if it doesn't, again, don't do it. On the exhale, I'm gonna start walking my hands back, curl my back toes under, and come back to downward dog. Inhale, left foot to the sky, and on the exhale, bring it on through. I'm bringing the knee behind my left wrist, and I'm going to drop down into pigeon pose. Five good deep breaths, maybe even more. On the next inhale, start to walk the hands back. Swing that right leg over and let's come to Sukhasana. And so we're sitting right here in a cross-legged pose again. From right here, let's go into cobbler's pose. The soles of the feet are together. I'm removing the flesh from my sit bones, and I'm gonna inhale, lengthen my spine, and on the exhale, gently fold forward to the point where I feel my body opening up. I'm not gonna push beyond the edge. I'm just going to the edge. If your knees are way up here, it just means your hips are tight, and they'll slowly relax down a little bit, maybe a lot, Maybe not so much, and it's okay. You're still getting the benefits of the pose. The important thing is that you take yourself right to the edge, 
to where you feel like where you feel like your body's opening up but not into pain that doesn't do anyone any good and I'm gonna inhale close the knees extend my feet remove the flesh from my sit bones one more time on the next inhale I'll come up with the hands and on the exhale I'll fold forward into Pachimottanasana. They say this is the third most important pose in yoga, Pachimottanasana. Opening up your whole back body. It's good for digestion. You're folding forward. All of that stuff is squeezing out of your organs. On a mental level, these forward folds are very calming for the nervous system. And on a spiritual level, this pose is all about surrender, going with the flow, being in the moment. One more breath. And then inhale up. I'm gonna go ahead and lie back down. And one more time, just gently rocking from side to side. I'm going to do a one final twist and it's that one where we open our hands palms face down and lower the knees to the right but this time I'm going to do a variation you can do the same one just lowering the knees to the right and then to the left or you can cross that left leg over the right completely like you're sitting in a chair and then go ahead and lower it bringing your right hand to the outside of the left knee and turning your eyes so that they're looking in the opposite direction as your knees. And breathe. Tucking the chin, the shoulders come away from the ears. On the inhale, we'll come up. Uncross the legs, cross them the other way and and look away from your knees in the opposite direction. You may also feel the stretch right here in the front of your shoulders. I do, and it feels awesome. One more breath. And then come up. I'm gonna do one last happy baby. Exhale, I'm just going to let my legs fall to the floor and open my palms up to the sky. My legs are open and my head is right here in the middle. And I'm going to take a two to three to five to ten minute Shavasana, whatever it is that you need. And Shavasana, Shavasana is the final resting pose. It's corpse pose. That's the translation for Shavasana. And what it means or what it does for you is that it allows your body to just absorb the benefits of your yoga practice. So just lie here in Shavasana and let your body drink up the yoga. And in the meantime, I will go ahead and close out our session by saying Namaste. Thank you for letting me be your guide today. Namaste.